Welcome to the Resonate podcast with Aideen. I'm here today with Jim Doyle. Jim is an intuitive vitality specialist transforming in human performance in mind, body and business. Jim rapidly identifies hidden blocks to performance in all areas and helps you to clear them permanently. Welcome, Jim. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited because I've spoken with you before. I know you have a lot to say about the voice and how you discovered yours and where you've taken it. And um, I really would love our listeners to, to hear a little bit of that story. So how did you find your voice? Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me, Aideen. Well, let's put things in context. When I was a teenager and into my 20s, although I was a very exuberant young Irishman, and I, I was not at all confident. I was fine in small groups, but in terms of speaking in public, it was an absolute terrifying meltdown experience for me. And that was something I struggled with for... I guess, well into my 30s, even my 40s, perhaps, yeah? at, at, at decreasing levels, but it was, all, it was always there. And then some years later, I got into, well, some would call it a midlife transition, others, others would call it a crisis. And uh, I ended up uh, going down a very deep personal development path with energy healing and a lot of uh, associated training and and self-discovery and that was the key thing now sometime so i did that for well three to five years not full time obviously and uh sometime later i joined toast my local club of toastmasters international over here in cambridge in the uk and um uh, before very long one of the long-term speakers said to me jim how do you get so relaxed and i went uh, pardon, what? And then I realised, eventually the penny dropped, as we say, that the work I'd done in terms of being grounded and being more self-aware of uh, where my feelings were coming from, where my stray thoughts were coming from, I was doing this automatically, i.e. the training worked, <laughs> and uh, that was the, the root of where I got to. So you're saying that the energy work that you had done and that that kind of healing journey almost had this lovely knock on effect that you were more calm while you were doing the Toastmasters and other people didn't know where that came from. Well, to be fair, the other people hadn't known me before to, to put things in context, but they were surprised at the level of uh, relaxation I had, or the state of relaxation I had when, when speaking, and that was just spontaneously in, in many cases, where you just put on, the, put on the spot questions thrown at you or scenarios thrown at you and you have to answer straight yes. away. And I was just, just relaxed about it, present, in other Presence words. Presence is a, such a beautiful word. I, and I talk about it to singing students and mentoring student, you know, clients. Um, when you can be in your own skin, and understand that you're enough, you're enough in that moment, you know, that there's nothing missing and you're not higher or lower than anyone else around you. You're just there. And that gives you a sense of something it, that it, it, it just makes you more in the moment, I guess. Yes, I, I, I think that that is the case. I would also add to that that it's uh, getting into that calmer state means that you are you have let go of the root causes of the the random worrying thoughts, the uh, the input you may have taken on board, say from teachers or from parents or other kids or whatever, or other th or bosses as as you were employed where you may have been told, you know, you're not worth it, nobody's listening to you. Not necessarily in so many words, but the essence of what's being said. And we pick that up and interpret it in our own way. And by being able to identify, by being able to initially, shall we say, identify where some of these come from and clear that, let's call it energy, consciousness, whatever it is, that block that we have within us. By getting rid of that, the stray thoughts that we had, the pattern that we had can go away. 
Of course, there may be many of them, but by the more the deeper you go, the calmer you get, the more present you are. That's beautiful. And the lovely thing that I've noticed working with people is when they decide, oh, I'm going to learn to sing a song, that goal is the reason they start to be willing to look at those things. So, and I'll ask the question, was there a moment when you wanted to sing or it wasn't received well or didn't go well? And so almost the decision that to say, I, I'm ready to, to do this, or I'm ready to stand up and be and sing or speak or take on the next goal. That's a reason then for people to go back and actually do that work that they need to do. Oh, well, that's right, uh, because whatever it is we do, whatever it is we're doing, whether it's singing, we're going for a new career or even a new hobby, if, if it's going to be to an, um, a higher level of performance, whatever it is we're performing, uh, speaking in public, maybe speaking at the UN or in Parliament or something like that, then it's a whole level, a whole new challenge. And as we raise our, as we raise the bar for ourselves, we find new levels of insecurity, uh, scariness, frightful, fr frightiness, all of these um, just appear. And even things that we thought we'd got rid of before can show up again in a slightly different yes. way. So, uh, being able to identify those and is is being able to know exactly what's behind it. Sometimes simply having that awareness of not what you think it is, but what you actually find it really is, just having the awareness of that can make it go away because then you can internally say, oh, it's that silly old occasion when X, Y, Z yes. happened. And having that Truth, the the awareness of that in truth rather than in our imagination yes. uh, simply allows it to go away. Like reframing it or seeing it from maybe if your child, seeing it from the adult's perspective and noticing it's not personal or those kinds of, of um, realizations? Mm, well, I'd say yes, but uh, I'm very cautious about labels and and reframing is often just changing the label it literally is like changing the label on a box saying this box contains y and it used to contain okay. x and i would i would apply the same analogy to this that it's seeing or becoming aware of the event or the memory or whatever it is in tr in absolute truth as it really is not just calling it something else because if it's something fairly significant, to obviously to us, uh, uh, it's, it's our significant thing, say it's coming up, we don't truly know what it is. Putting a label on it doesn't make it any better. It might in some cases, but in many cases it won't. Yeah. And, and that's from my experience over 20 odd years. Interesting. So... Just I, I don't come from the NLP, the neuro -lingu linguistic uh, programming approach, and I don't always agree with some of the of the. I'm, I'm not in depth familiar with it, obviously, but some of the principles that I come across are, and I've seen this on videos a number of times, where uh, a practitioner, shall we say, they remove or clear the block that somebody has about a particular behaviour. But then they go along the lines of saying, well, now we have to put something in there to replace that. I totally disagree. That is wrong because I, frankly, I see that as misinformation or in some cases arrogance on the part of the practitioner as only the owner of the problem and the, that consciousness knows what who they are and what they are. And by putting something else in, in place of that, it's a bit like a foreign body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you took, say, uh, a pyramid of ping pong balls and there's one little one in there that's dark grey and they should all be bright orange, mm -hmm. shall we say. Yeah. If you help the, the owner of those to get rid of the grey one, then all the others will shuffle into a place, into a new relative position to each other. 
but it's still the same person without that grey bit yeah. in them. So who am I to say what's meant to go in there? I've no idea. How could I know? Nobody knows. And if, the, if you know, say, uh, you're working with somebody who has got stage fright or can't get their voice above a certain level or the breathing to, to a cer certain level, it's most likely because they have some kind of emotional block around that particular movement or, or issue. But if you help them to overcome that or get rid of the grey ping-pong ball, yeah. Yeah, then they can reshape themselves and start to uh, yeah, reach the high note or the deep breath because that grey ping-pong ball is no longer there. You don't put something in instead of it, do you? No, and you know, I think I understand what you mean because there's. I've had some experience with NLP and sometimes it just felt so false because it was like I was telling myself to be a certain way and forcing it into my brain in a way that my soul didn't didn't really need or want. And um, I've actually, since doing more my meditation practices and my spiritual practices, very gently things have changed. Um, but it's never, I, I, I'm very wary now of trying to force a happy thought back in if I'm in a different state. You know, I, I'm more interested actually to figure it out the way you're suggesting and finding out what's the truth of this moment um, and not to push away the learning that sometimes you receive by yeah. seeing something in its entirety and seeing the truth of it. So the goal of maybe singing the song or doing the thing, it's not more important than understanding the truth of who you are as you go on that journey to maybe achieving something new. Absolutely. And I, lo I love the way you put that uh, in, in a very succinct way where you, you go in softly, gently, not you know, push, in, push in the alternative program uh, because uh, you know, we, as a big, shall we say, blob of consciousness, <laughs> um, we are a whole combination of good bits, bad bits, variable bits. Yeah, and so we've got a conflict between some of our parts of consciousness, the the, the grey ping pong ball, you know, the, the the thing that's that hurts in there, and we just need to rearrange things or maybe change one of those in our way to suit us. But sometimes we just need that external help to be able to identify that because we may be hiding it from ourselves because it's a little bit painful. Mm -hmm. And equally, it's not necessarily to go back and, and rake over the old pain. It's just about identifying how it affects them, where it comes from. Uh, I do it as when something comes from. So if I'm working with a person, it's uh, I do you know, kinesiology, dowsing or muscle testing. They're all the same as far as I'm concerned. And for that person and say, OK, let me just check around this problem where it comes from. And I just do like... 20 tests in two minutes as it were and I'll ask a question like so what happened when you were 17 or 18 years old as a random example I don't know their story and even if they'd written it, it a great tome of it they'd probably have left out that little moment <laughs> and then we can fine tune it around something that happened at school at home with a friend whatever and they have the response, they have the knowledge, and that's all we need to know. And maybe where do they, when they think about that particular moment in their life or period of time, how do they feel about it? Where do they feel it? It might be in the stomach or the heart area or the throat or the, the head or the fingertip, doesn't matter, even outside their body somewhere. And then we can just work together and make that, feeling related to that stress point back in time go away bingo it's gone now do you think we uh, need we can then measure in sorry to interrupt you i was just wondering do we need no, to no. unblock everything to make progress in life or you know no not no 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 only when it's a problem okay. only when it's a problem because we've all got problems blocks crises etc 
Of course, we don't need to unblock everything. We only need to unblock the things which are causing us problems. Yeah. Yeah. And when we have a when we have a problem, when we're going back to where we were at, at the beginning, when you're going to that next level of performance, singing, expression, work, whatever it is, um, then you are becoming a new person. You are growing in in many ways, and the configuration of your mindset or your consciousness that suited you and was good enough up until now isn't good enough anymore so you if you like you may be seeing or feeling your consciousness in a somewhat in a different way yeah so you become more aware of a problem that you didn't know you had before <laughs> and then if you decide it's a big enough problem that you can't break through it you don't know what's holding you back then it's time to do your meditation or get help if you can't do it yourself. Beautiful. And is the process to finding your purpose or like finding your voice or like say you don't know what that next level is, you don't know what it is you're meant to to expand into yet. Do you help people with that as well? And how would you how would you do that? Ah, no, that's that is a very big question. <laughs> that's a very big question. It depends. So uh, just a moment. I think you see what I what I find uh, and it's fairly well. It's quite well known, actually, in, in energy healing. But somewhere I missed it where I wasn't listening in my training. And what I found working with women in particular was that a number of them who had some kind of expression issues, they weren't able, this is not about singing, but just literally about express their voice or their opinion or be heard. It's like almost they're in the invisible person. There is sometimes um, a, a balance issue between the energy of the throat, the expression, and the creative expression. Yeah, in, in around around the womb or the bladder area, whatever, or the sacral chakra, if you want to be speak energetic terms, and very often, if you've got a blockage in uh, an energetic blockage in one of them, you have an energetic blockage in the other one, and they're 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 interactive. So sometimes those slight issues that somebody might have had may be highly relevant to the problem they're trying to overcome, but it, th there is no logical way it is connected to it. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that make sense to you? Yeah, because it's, if it's emotional, it might not be a logical... There might not be a logical reason, <laughs> but there could be a, an, an, an emotional reason or, you know, I think we, we tend to respond from a perception or from a feeling or we're complicated people aren't we Jim <laughs> absolutely we're, we're very complicated beasties <laughs> absolutely yeah <laughs> what, what wonder, wonderful beings but definitely complicated and sometimes there are very odd and unusual uh core background issues that may be holding somebody back and one of the one of the things i did a lot of work on before i did my energy healing was ancestral healing and uh we can be affected by people gen many generations back we don't uh, about it's like the the energy of the trauma or whatever happened war pestilence famine doesn't matter what it was or simply being bullied or poor relationships or money stuff going back, shall we say, four, five, six generations. You may have no idea of that family history, but quite possibly in a conversation with, with, with me or the way I work, these things come up and become very apparent and that, that energy can be cleared. And by clearing that energy from the family line or the ancestral line, it kind of ripples all the way down and you can feel it. Yeah? And th the point I'm getting at is those unknown, unwritten uh, historical background in your family line can show up in weird and wonderful ways in this life. Yeah. Yeah? 
and you you may know nothing about it. Um, sometimes it's very subtle. I remember there was an uh, English actress, Olivia Colman, was on Who Do You Think You Are? a program on, on, on the UK TV and or UK television. And uh, I just came in the rooms it was on and I happened to, to, to hear them say, oh yes, we're back to, I think it was her fourth generation ancestors and they were from India. And she said something like, it was, oh, we always said we thought we had ancestors from India. So that to me means that, in that at this level, at this present time, they had this sort of awareness about ancestors from India, and there was the proof that it really was true, but they had no evidence up wow. until then. And that's... That, to me, is a perfect example of the kind of thing I've come across in many different shapes and forms. Wow. Yeah, well, I mean, we talk about yeah. genetic memory, our DNA. We're storing information from past generations physically also. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't we in other ways? Exactly. It's very interesting. Exactly. And definitely, I think... Um, you know, a parent will pass on their money worries that they got from their grandparents, that they got from their grandparents. Like those are very simple, an example of, of, you know, how we get passed down certain things. But there are more subtle things that uh, that can pop up. I, and I've definitely done some healing. I've worked with a kinesiologist before and um, and I've had, you know, uh, experiences where you know it was almost like being brought back to famine time or something like that and that feeling of desperation mm -hmm. and it's it, there's no solution you know and it, there's so many situations i think in people today where we have so many choices actually and we have so many possibilities and it's a lot less restrictive where there's a lot more possibility for expansion but sometimes people are very, they don't see any of that because they're holding this energy of there's no solution or there's like, it's it's hopeless. That feeling of things are hopeless. And, and that's yes. a very hard one to hold because it will create depression. And um, I don't know if there's oh, yeah, very absolutely. many actual situations that are completely hopeless in this moment on this planet. I, I don't know. I, 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 I hope not. I hope there's hope in every situation. But we have to believe in the hope yeah. a little to take the steps forward. Don't we? Yes, absolutely. And uh, we can also have things like, um, I've come across one quite recently, which is uh, not, not self, it's not self-destruction, self-sabotage where somebody can actually be self-sabotaging themselves in lots of invisible ways and not even invisible to others. Uh, but it means, if you like, to take three steps forward and half a step backward all the time. So they're limiting their progress. And that, in that particular case, it was coming from quite a few generations back. Goodness knows what happened in that particular case. We, we don't know. But it was um, surprising how high the level was actually affecting them. And is it possible then to clear that? And they didn't know it. To clear it without understanding it fully? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's only energy. It's, it's simply energy and con or consciousness. And by going into a place of truth and acceptance and acknowledgement of there is something out of balance here and working with it to get healed to get cleared uh, quite often people kind of go and give themselves a shake and go what happened oh I feel different or that feeling is that tight spot isn't there anymore yeah. it's 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 astonishing what happens it is <laughs> I, I've experienced it myself and I would encourage anyone listening who hasn't um, yeah. explored this as a as a possible you know way of moving forward to consider it because I and I think it's important that you always choose a practitioner that you like or that you has been recommended or I think that connection you know it's like with you know people who want to sing like I'm not the singing teacher for everybody I think you have to be attracted to the person that you want to work with and it's similar and especially important for energy work I think 
Absolutely, oh, absolutely, because if if it doesn't feel right, and by the way, we all make mistakes at different times. We make wrong choices, or call it your life lessons. But it is essential that whatever practitioner you go to, in, in, in energy or otherwise, that you choose the right one. And but we're always on a learning curve, so we will make mistakes. We will learn, and I would also say that the practitioner or trainer or whatever uh, uh, that is relevant now may be good for us for say three months or six months or two years but in a few years time we're at a different level we've be we have gone through the to the higher level we've become that different person we've become that different resonance or frequency and if we need help, we need a different person because they haven't risen with us. They're at that particular level, which was perfect at the time. Mm. Thank you for bringing the idea of yeah. resonance into the conversation. Of course, that's the the whole purpose of my podcast. <laughs> um, I have learned in the last year and a half to two years um, to trust this feeling within me that, that recognises something in, in common, a kind of a, that I like someone or that um, there's something about them that feels resonant with me. And then because I've, when I've met you, I felt that I was like, that's Jim is someone I want to have on my podcast, you know, it's, and that, it, that, yeah, Aww. but that actually is a key learning for me because previous to that, I would have been more, um, maybe trying to think it through or I'd convince myself I would be like oh I should be like let's say in a business I should be you know using a, a, a strategist or I should be doing this or I should be doing that but I was finding people who were telling me the way it should be and saying they could give me what I think I need but it doesn't feel quite right and in the last two years I've stopped following <laughs> I've stopped you know doing it that way and started to to work on this bit of like acknowledging that feeling within me that guides me that's that's essential and I feel that the whole pandemic time has been a blessing for many it because it has forced uh, a very large proportion of people to go for a place of being totally in their head, totally logical, to have to, let's face it, face their fears, their humanity, their... Um, I'm not going not to push spirit, spirituality because it's all part of being human, but it's brought a lot of people to a space where they've had to go inside, yeah, to actually feel inside, to get to that intuitive level, a good feeling... They're happy, they're unhappy, they're terrified, whatever, which is all part of the human condition. And that can only be good. I know some people listening to this will say, how can I say that? But it is because it's self-learning and getting to know ourselves. Yeah. It took me decades. It took me decades, many decades, till I hit my midlife transition, as I said, uh, to realise that there was so much more to me and I'd been suppressing so much of me. And frankly, now, quite a few years later, or decades later, um, I know I'm still suppressing various parts of me, but I'm working on it because it's a work in progress. And that is <laughs> enough. I'm the same. Like, there's loads of things. People who yeah. can, you know, look at my, my business or look at the way I promote myself or the photograph or whatever, and they think you've got it made. And yes, in many ways, I've made lots of progress. And I congratulate myself for that. There's mm. a pat on the back for me um, because that wasn't always easy. In fact, it was quite difficult in many times. But I, de I still feel that pull, that it pull for expansion. And what we were talked about from the beginning, which was, are we leveling up a little bit here and there? How can we, you know, improve ourselves in some way? Not thinking of ourselves as deficient, but knowing that um, every day is an, an opportunity for more of us to come into the world. Absolutely, and on that on that note, um, we spoke before the podcast about a conference I, I I've been to. So a good few years ago, after my 
uh, Toastmasters stint, or t- at the end of it, Toastmasters International, uh, I had got my distinguished Toastmaster, and a friend said, you can speak at the European conference. And I went, no, 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 and they kept pestering me. Last moment, I, I sent in a, my application. Well, what do I do? Stage presence. Excellence in stage pres- presence and personal confidence. Sent it off. Next Sunday night, it comes back. You haven't sent a video? Oh, God, I haven't got time. Will this do? Oh, okay, fine, right. Next Sunday, they came back and said, you've been selected from a high level of applicants from across Europe. And I went, oh, my God, what have I done? (laughs) (laughs) And uh, so at the actual conference, which was in Budapest in uh, Hungary some years ago, um, there were about 400 people there from, I don't know, 18 countries or so. And there were two well-known speakers, it was myself and the other person who's an outsider and the other person I don't know. I ended up with nearly 200 people of the 400 in my workshop. <laughs> and, you know, it must, be, it must have been the energy or, or what I said or, or something. But I asked for a volunteer. This was more or less spontaneous in the workshop. And I'm in an auditorium. And uh, this lady leaps up, me, 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 me. And several rows back, so she clambers over all the people and comes up on stage. Now, bear in mind that these are experienced Toastmasters, all of them. And I said, introduced her and said, right, I have a role for you. Great. It's 30 seconds long. What? <laughs> and it's a non-speaking role. What do you want me to do? It's OK. Don't worry. All I want you to do is to stand in the centre of the stage connect to the audience, just scanning around from side to side or whatever way you normally do, pay attention to what's going on in your mind and your body and don't do anything about it. Just pay attention to it. And I stepped off stage and there was a sea of horror on the faces in the audience <laughs> because they were projecting what they might feel in that particular situation. Wow. Yeah, And uh, we talked... We, Talked about it afterwards, and uh, she's an international coach. She's now over in California, I think. And um, she said every time after that that she got into a challenging situation, she literally went straight back to that moment on stage of what it felt like being there, being grounded, being fully present, and everything was fine. Wow, that's a phenomenal exercise to do. Like, how often do we sit like that in in the moment with and not try to to organize the energy and to input input in uh i love that mm. yeah I, I i do that quite a lot obviously you know my, my own meditation time and uh paying attention to what's going on and especially when i'm working with um dis- distant clients around the world you know i'm I may be talking to them on screen or uh, and at the same time tuning into what I feel and what I sense. And so doing the healing work with them. So it's a que- for me, it's a question of being, OK, the phrase isn't strictly true, but the best way I can describe it is extremely present or fully present uh, in the situation where I am now. And it's dynamic and it's changing. And I never know what's coming next because there is no yeah. script. There is no plan. I'm working with a person. Uh, They have a situation and I'm aware of my feelings. I'm aware of, often aware of theirs because I'm a a deep empath as well. And sometimes it appears that I actually pick up what they're feeling before they've picked it up because they may not have that self-awareness. It's beautiful. It's about that connection. That sounds, yeah. That's right, yeah. And um, I equally, <laughs> I work with, sometimes I work with so-called inanimate objects. I work with properties as well. This is what I was going to ask you. Now, houses don't use... <laughs> because I was thinking, they, we've talked a lot about <laughs> relating ourselves to others or to a group or to one-on-one. And a lot of people will, are not interested in speaking or singing. Maybe they're artists or they're, they want to mm. relate to something they do on their own. So I think this... Next, tell us about relating to an inanimate object as in a property. Tell us more. Well, it's... If you speak... To, uh, I don't know about all the world, but various parts of the world, I would say 
not the UK and not particularly Western Europe, but e more Eastern Europe and Mediterranean countries. Some people will say that uh, your house chooses you, your home chooses you. Wow. Not the other way around. There is a conscious interaction and a property, uh, a ha let's call it a home, yeah, uh, or an industrial unit for that matter, c can contain, can hold an energy or a consciousness. Now, most likely there have been one or some incidents in your life. You've gone to a place and went, ooh, I don't like this yeah. place. Like we said earlier on, you didn't, you weren't comfortable around some people and you were more comfortable around others. And it's the same with places. Uh, you can have, say in a home, you can have a divorce home where several couples in a row have divorced. Yeah, and it seems to be the house has that energy. That's yeah, an extreme case. You can have others where people get sick or the neighbours keep getting sick. And you can also have houses that uh, people can't sell. They're stuck on the market, perfectly good price, and, you know, they should sell properly. And they don't. And <laughs> some of the ones that I've worked with in that case, uh, at what, some point... Maybe the owner doesn't want to fully sell, but sometimes the house doesn't want to be sold. It's like it likes the people there, or it's sick and tired of people, and it doesn't want new people in. <laughs> Does that make sense? You know, I was watching a show on Netflix, um, and it's about a house. It's a like a it's about a scary house, but the woman is an architect, and she said that she felt that the house has bones and the pipes are like veins, and that it's a that it's a living. Uh, she described it in this in this uh, it's called Hill House and it's I wouldn't recommend it if you're a scaredy cat because my husband Mike loves scary stuff so that's why I was watching it but I thought it was lovely because so much happens like there's so much movement within the walls of a house like within the pipes and yeah. there's it's got a, it's got it's got something it's it has a certain aliveness possibly that you could say um I know not everyone will subscribe to this idea but um, I'm interested to hear how energy work can work with that well consciousness and energy are one and the same thing so you you we are all conscious beings and how do you describe consciousness well I'm sure if we ask some of the AI programs that are around writing text they'll give us some fascinating <laughs> some fascinating answers uh, I've tried it with what is love and it's very boring what, what it comes out with um, uh, with a person with a property think about a house so you have say the living room a couple of bedrooms whatever it is maybe in one particular room in the house somebody has been very depressed for a long period of time or there have been a couple who've been arguing a lot of really strained relationships what happens in from my perception is that that energy that emotion remains in that space mm -hmm. so it's you can go into a house and it feels okay except for that one particular room yeah, where maybe there was a lot of arguments going on, a lot of stress, you know, depression, whatever, because that consciousness, that energy remains there. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it remains there. And that is, yeah, it's just like a person can, can have depression energy or some kind of consciousness that is that they're uncomfortable with, and that can be cleared and that can be changed and can be changed remotely. Now, uh, the best I've I've worked with property developers who have in some cases loans being blocked where their financial agent said yeah absolutely fine go with this you know the financier should be fine last minute blocked they go to another one yep should be fine blocked again when I did some work some energy work identifying and clearing the blocks either with them and or the property Bingo, it came straight through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100, 100, 150,000, 200,000 um, pounds came through in a few days. I worked with another property where, again, it was an experienced property developer. They were remortgaging their own home, and exactly that situation was happening. And I sat in meditation, I ch chatted to the owner at length, 
and who fully understood what I was talking about. And I tuned into this house, and I'm getting that they don't own it. But they've lived there 10 years, <laughs> and it didn't make sense. And I'm thinking, it, it looks like a... Yeah, you know, sort of a, a council estate or something like that. And I, looked, I, I went back to him and I said, it's like you don't own it. There's something really strange from back there. And they said, oh, it was an ex-police uh, house, which was sold off in the UK 25 years or so ago. Yeah, And what I was getting was that the police authority, I, I guess it was, still energetically owned that yeah. property. All the paperwork was done, all the legal stuff was done, yeah. obviously, but energetically, possibly somewhere in the loans department, somebody was picking this up like we pick up a bad vibe yeah. in a house and, and marking them down instead of marking them up. And I cleared that, and again, there were a few other things needed to be done uh, to, to be sorted out in that situation. And again, the loan came through in a very short period of time. That's phenomenal. Oh, Jim, <laughs> it's been absolutely... It's the same with uh, businesses, businesses, relationships. Oh, you know, it's all absolutely. the same thing. <laughs> well, I, let's, I'm encouraging any of the listeners to c connect with you on any energetic block um, where the frequency needs to be realigned. And well, unfortunately, we're coming to the end of the time that we've got allocated for our chat. I know that we could keep chatting for a very long time and you've got so much to offer. Thank you. Thank you. We certainly, I would say it's just when life is out of balance rather than the frequency is not right or whatever, a lot of people wouldn't get that. But when life is out of balance, life hurts and things, it's like hitting your head against an invisible glass wall. You're trying to do something and move forward in some way and it's like, bang, you keep hitting this limit. There's something there that's stopping you. Conventionally, everything should be okay. But in your case, it's yeah. not happening. So there may well be something that's out of balance there that needs resolving. And the man for the job is Jim Doyle. <laughs> Jim Doyle, absolutely. <laughs> or, yeah, trust your instincts on that, guys. Yeah, or, exactly. <laughs> try, try, if, 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 you look, if you look at my website or YouTube channel and you don't like the look of me, that's perfectly okay. Find somebody you exactly. do. Exactly. Well, Jim, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to say to the listeners before we sign off? Yes, he says spontaneously going, yes, what's going to come next? <laughs> <laughs> um, which is learn to trust yourself because most cases we are conditioned to respond to what we're told to do in, gen yeah. in general. But we're not taught to trust ourselves. We might be taught in a sp specific way about sports or something like that. Learn to trust yourself. Trust your gut feeling. You know, if you're going to do something, everybody says it's right and it doesn't feel right. Why isn't it right? Feel into it. Make your own decisions. Beautiful. And some people won't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, some people won't like it. But that is, that's your process of growing and moving forward. So just trust I love yourself. That. Thank you so much for joining us on the Resonate podcast, Jim. It's been a really beautiful conversation and I definitely recommend Jim. So he put him on the consideration list if you're looking for someone to help you to overcome some issue. And um, we look forward to um, having you on, listen again to the podcast um, very soon. Bye bye.